Yes, sir. Now, you guys are which one? G2, is it? G3. G3, okay. So, remind me what your challenge statement was again. 20% market share. Okay, 20% market share. In the other one, you have Understood, everybody? All clear? Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. What did you identify as your key strength? Differentiated product, number one. Number two is strong finance. Okay, key opportunity, what did you identify as? E-commerce and uh, ugliness for fitness. Okay, key weakness, what did you identify as? Weak supply chain. <coughs> key threat, what did you identify as? Number one is short life of trends. And number two is recession. Okay, now, good. Um, let me ask the class, is there anything dramatically different that any of you have identified in terms of, your destinations will be different, but in terms of what you identified as your drivers and your impediments, is there anything dramatically different? Drivers, we have stores at prime location. Okay. And there's 75% non-yoga factors. Okay. Uh, hiring of experienced managers. And the mm -hmm. opportunity is that we have it's an early growth story. Okay. Uh, now, let me, let me, I want to make two comments. It's very tempting to identify, you've identified how many opera strengths? Four. Four. Okay. Very tempting to identify many, many strengths. I want you to impose a certain discipline on yourself. It may well be that we have four strengths, but here's the general rule of thumb. If I have four strengths, I'll never have a problem in my life ever. It's like, um, you know, uh, Karan, because he had the Kavach and the, yeah, he could, he, never shot, could, could never die. And there's very few Karan in the world, right? So j just remember that when you think through your strengths and be very critical in terms of are these really, I mean, it, I, it could well be, right? But press yourself and ask, are these really unique and are these really, are they all scoring high on the impact and uniqueness dimension, remember, right? And if you think they do, that's fine, right? But there is a temptation to have a broad net of actors. And this stage is where you try and limit the number of actors, right? So the temptation is to write multi-stars, seven heroes. The problem with multi-stars is the plot becomes very difficult for the audience to retain, and there's a certain loss of credibility if I truly believe that I have these seven um, strengths. And if I have seven strengths, highly unlikely that anything will take me down, right? So pay attention to that, both from kind of a storytelling perspective and an analytic perspective, that there is great. Okay, so that's my comment about the strength. What did you say was your key opportunity? It's an early growth story. Okay, so it's an early, okay. So why is that an opportunity? What is the trend that is helpful? So the category is growing. So everybody understood. Good, good, okay, good. What did, okay, weakness. Apart from what? Apart from the Right, we have focus on customer Okay. Okay. okay, and what is the weak threat? Right, we have only one threat is increase in the cost price. Okay. That is increase. Yeah. 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 The, my general lesson for everybody in this stage is write single hero projects. That's your object, you know, your goal is to, the temptation is to write multi-stars, right? Uh, but there's various concerns around writing multi-stars. Difficult to hold audience attention. 
right? Single hero projects, right? Maximum shole, two hero projects, right? When you get into Jani Dushman territory, <laughs> you can't remember. <laughs> cannot remember, right? So, so keep it, um, so keep it simple. Keep the narrative tight. The other thing is, and again, I'm not, I, I don't mean to, to sort of say lie and make up drama, but what makes Shole exciting was who? The, the villain. If the antagonist is not exciting in your narrative, you don't really have a terribly gripping narrative, right? So this needs to be juicy. I need to be able to look at this and go, oh my God, right? This is a problem, right? So let's look at you guys, right? And I say, okay, weak supply chain. This is pretty huge. I mean, if you look at our ambition, right? And we don't have the capability to deliver on that ambition. That's pretty significant, right? That's buffer like almost, right? And uh, uh, the short life of these trends. So I'm in, a, that's also very scary for me, right? Because what this is saying is these trends last for three months, okay? So I need to be in and out of the market in three months, for which I need amazing supply chain capability. I have lousy supply chain capability. Right? So collectively, this is scaring me. If I have this, the likelihood of me attaining this is <coughs> not good. You have my attention because of this. Right? So write it's narratives that, that keep the audience now in suspense. I mean, I, after this stage, need to think, how are we going to get here given these liabilities? Right? Think of it both from a kind of honest analytic perspective and a rhetorical perspective. So you know, thinking of uh, even from more macro perspective, like short life of trend, what the uh, trend what we meant is today uh, there is a place for fitness. Tomorrow it might not be. So uh, we are in a very niche market, yeah, right? Yeah, Our yeah. product is very differentiated and yeah. Right, so then that actually becomes a threat, right? Not a weakness. Because if you say yeah, that the trend we are talking about trades only. So we don't have uh, a lot more line of products to sell. If this uh, phase goes away, we don't have any. Understood. So this is a major thread. Yeah, I, I think we're saying the same thing. We don't need to. We're muddying the waters. We've said what we need to say. So leave it. Uh, just one thing. Is it something that is very different from what we have? With that is they have identified strong finance as a key, key. Uh, strength. strength. Yeah. Whereas one of the sentences over here says right. that due to the high valuations in the market, yeah. uh, raising additional funding for this company might not be might possible. Be so we are seeing it as a fair key threat. Fair enough. I think that's fair. Is it a threat or a weakness? As if that is something. It should be simple. Threat. Is it internal? Like, is it is it internal or is it external? So if I were to say the ability, my ability to raise funds in the market, my mm -hmm. ability, okay. internal. Right? If the, how do I phrase it is really what it turns on. Okay. Because you did it, it is because your revenues are very strong. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Right? So it's, it's good. Okay? So, yes. Hmm? Ashwin, also a strong dollar, right? It states in the you know, article that. Is that a, can be considered as a strength or a So tell me why. Like if you have a strong uh, dollar, you know, you can expect a good uh, profit coming down. Why? What does a strong dollar have to do with profitability? If you're dealing in the you know, exports and all, uh -huh. so in that case, a strong dollar will indicate. Localized market based in the US and Canada. Can't yeah. So it's a localized market. They said like you know US and Canada only. They, no, they also have in Australia. And so it depends it again. Like relative. It depends now on what your destination is. If your if your destination is the domestic market, whether you have a strong or weak dollar, how does it impact? If your destination is overseas markets potentially exchange rates have a role to play. Okay. If it's in the domestic market, I, you'll have to convince me why exchange rates are, are a factor. Because Probably currency the gains the is that currency gains are happening. Okay. okay, pay attention now to what I'm saying. What is your destination? So tell me, what is your destination? Your destination is the maximum uh, current... Oh. 40% increase, increase in sales in Okay, in, in which markets? U.S. Canada. Okay, so 40% U.S. Canada, okay? Remember that, okay? Keep that ready. What you say are your, what, so this exchange rate thing, where you've identified that as a what? Okay, so now explain to me why the exchange rate will enable you to get that 40%. Explain. Impact and uniqueness. Um, I don't know, that was that, uh, the reason is, 
that was a line between either strengths or an opportunity that's not my question my question is whichever it is what explain it on the basis of impact the currency gain whether it's a key strength or a key opportunity explain its impact on the 40% number and explain why we are uniquely suited to exploit that as opposed to anybody else we are not uniquely unique. okay so it's low on uniqueness okay yeah. And now explain on impact. Okay, because uh, what it is written in the text is that uh, there is 15% from the currency gains because of the strong Canadian dollar. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what we are anticipating is that if the Canadian dollar is strong, suppose if it is weak, say for example, mm-hmm. then there won't be any currency gains. Plus there will be a fear of loss because from Australia things Okay, I'm waiting for you to connect it to your destination. It's not that big an opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Everything has to be its own. Remember that the the slide. So one thing that could connect would be uh, the reshuffling of the staff that happened. That is one opportunity where we can leverage on. Yeah. Remember, remember this slide. You have to identify currency gain as an opportunity. Assess its impact on a scale of one to five. Assess its uniqueness on a scale of one to five. And if it gets high numbers, then it has the potential to be a key opportunity or a key strength. So the uh, the outcome that we have identified for the <coughs> increase in sales in two years. So one thing that can be thought is potential connected to it could be that the reshuffled staff, upper management that happened, right? The people from experienced people have come in. So they are focusing it because they want to improve the supply chain, which can lead you to increase sales. So can this be a good indicator? You will have to convince me, right? You will have to convince me of any of this. And you and it's, I'm not even saying, you know, I have random criteria for convincing. I'm saying convince me that whatever, you know, you've identified as a strike, it has an impact on getting me to my destination, 40%. And I'm uniquely suited. To, I have it and nobody else has it. Yeah, we believe this. Right? If you can argue it out on those two criteria, then you have reason to argue that it is a unique strength, a key strength. Okay. Right? So that's the logic. Identify your key, your strength, and then apply these two criteria to convert the strength into a key strength. Okay? This step is absolutely critical. Because what you're taking is you're taking about 500 facts from your case. You're taking 500 facts from your case, and you're saying these four facts are the ones that matter. Okay, again, general theme about life. Not all 500 facts matter. These are the four critical facts that we are going to pay attention to. Focus, right? That is what this is doing. And that, hence, my caution against many, many heroes. Right? So, having identified... Now, once you get a good situation analysis, you're there, right? Because now what you're saying is, So if somebody says to you, why didn't you identify exchange rate as a risk? What is your answer? Because it is not taking me to my destination. It is not not relevant in the context of where I'm going. And it's something that benefits everybody. It's a good thing, but it's not something I'm building my strategy around. There and Robin. So there may be a case that uh, I'm the only one who's sourcing raw materials from a company. Absolutely. 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 No, that was about to ask. Now, if I'm procuring some raw materials from the outside, you know, in that case, you know, I can make an, can we make that assumption? No, you can never make favorable assumptions. Only make unfavorable assumptions. Never make favorable assumptions about your. That's laziness. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, uh, things will continue being great. No, no. Assume that there is going to be a two percent decline in economic activity. There is a possibility. Of- like when we do scenario planning, we never do happy scenarios. You know, people will love me even more. What will happen then? Right? You don't need, you know, you do scenarios for negative scenarios. It's actually, you know, maybe we should do positive scenarios, but we don't. We do negative scenarios in marriage. Okay. Are we comfortable so far? Everybody should now boil it down to I have a destination, and ideally I have four, two heroes, two villains. Right? That's the narrative. And then... Even further, right? Ideally, you know, you want to dig even further and say, really, it's a one hero, one villain project that I have. 
But, you know, 2, 2 is fine. Okay? Next step. Okay. Having identified your actors, key strength, key weakness, key opportunity, key threat, having identified all of them, you're now going to build a big story. And what is a story? A story involves a destination, it involves a hero, it involves a villain, and it involves the hero winning over the villain. And when the hero loses, you have Devdas. Right? But you don't want to write Devdas stories. You want to write Chole stories. Right? Presumably without Amitabha. Right? So you want to write positive, you know, kind of like you want to show. So, here are, here are some ways in which you can write big stories. Okay? There are many ways. But these are the four characters in your novel, okay? You can write a pure opportunity story, okay? Your pure opportunity story could be, uh, I'm not talking about this case, but China, okay? I, I don't know where China is on the map today, but, but I've read, I've scanned the environment and China represents a huge opportunity. My recommendation to your company is go to China. Develop the strengths needed to go to China. A pure opportunity story. That's one way of writing a story. The critique of that story is, I'm, I'm here, you know, I, I say to you, buddy, I can't, you know, go to Chittagong. Where you ask me to go to China? It's not feasible for me, right? That can be Okay, so that's uh, a pure opportunity story. The more reasonable stories, right, the more kind of less imaginative but more reasonable stories are, Taking, oops, taking my key strengths, taking my key strength and either mitigating my key threat, using my key strength to mitigate my key threat. So there's a key threat in the environment that I'm mitigating with my strength. That's one idea of a key story. Using my key strength to exploit my key opportunity. Okay. I have something, you know, I, I can go to China because I have capability in export markets. Right. Right. Export. Or use the, my key strength to uh, address my key weakness. Right? These are what we call reasonable stories. They, and they all originate from the key strength. Right? The key strength either addresses the threat, the opportunity, or the weakness. Does this make sense? Okay? Or, as I say, you can have a pure opportunity story. Or you can have a pure threat story. And a pure threat story is if I don't do this, we will die. So drop everything else and focus on this one particular threat, the China price. Okay, so the China price is a key threat story. You know the China price, right? Like the Siva Kasi and Tena Kasi and the hype building industry in Hyderabad decimated by China, right? Pure threat story. What do I do with the you know kites in in Hyderabad? There used to be a thriving kite building in, you know, people would manufacture kites in, in Hyderabad. Thriving industry. You would get, when I was growing up, Hyderabad kites the, and the manja from Hyderabad was sold in the entire country, right? There are now, there used to be hundreds of families making manja in Hyderabad. There are now two families that make manja in Hyderabad, decimated by the Chinese, okay? So the China price, right? five times lower than the Indian price and twice uh, as good quality has destroyed the industries. Yeah, and similarly in North America across the range, right? So what do we do? That could be a pure threat story or a pure opportunity story. But the more reasonable ones are around uh, linking the key strength to the run. Are we good? Okay. So what I'm asking you to do, and then you can have like, if you've had two key strengths and two key weaknesses, for example, like you guys did, you can leverage, you know, one of your stories can be use strength one to address opportunity. You know, you get, you get, you get. Right, good. Right. So the next, and I think we will do, you know, we will do this exercise and, and maybe end with this. What I want you to do is develop two big stories using the tool that I've just given you. Big story A and big story B and articulate for me the underlying logic of the big story like I've done here. Okay, 4.15, 4.30. Or do you want to take a break now and come back? I mean, well, let, we should end by 5, max. Right? So let's go.